You might not be big yet, but you still produce a lot of garbage. Did you know that every person in the United States produces almost 4.5 pounds of garbage every day? Whoa! The reason this seems hard to believe is that it happens very slowly. We hardly notice when we put something into the garbage can. If you look at all the things you consume in a day, you might not believe your eyes. In just one week, you alone can produce over 32 pounds of waste. 32 pounds. That's like 28 bottles of pop, or 35 boxes of cereal, or 80 boxes of macaroni and cheese. That means that just during the school year, each of you produces over 1,216 pounds of garbage. <coughs> wow! Can you imagine putting that much trash in your garbage can and then trying to pull it to the curb? Because we all produce so much waste, we should all understand where it goes and what happens to it. Most of us know that we put things in the trash and then out to the garbage can. <laughs> we also know that a garbage truck comes to our homes once a week and empties the cans. But does the garbage just magically disappear? Of course it doesn't. So let's find out where it goes. After the big garbage truck picks up the garbage in front of your home, it takes it to the energy recovery facility. The workers at this facility don't think your garbage looks or smells bad. In fact, they're about to change this ugly stuff into a remarkable resource. When the garbage arrives at the Davis Energy Recovery Facility, the garbage truck carefully backs into the receiving bay and dumps its load of waste. The workers at this facility don't call it garbage anymore, they call it fuel, because very soon it will be turned into fire. But more on that in just a minute. When the garbage truck leaves, a great big machine called a front-end loader pushes the fuel into a large pit where the first step in a remarkable process takes place. High above the fuel pit sits a large crane with an enormous claw. This claw is controlled by a technician who guides it carefully down, grabbing a gigantic load of fuel. The claw then carries this load of fuel high above the fuel pit and puts it into the feed hopper, which is really like a great big funnel. This funnel is so big, you could put a whole swing set in it. Now that's big. The fuel drops out the bottom of this funnel and is pushed by a large ram into the combustion chamber. The fuel is carried through the chamber on a combustion grate or a conveyor system. The fuel begins to burn and outside air or oxygen is added to make a tremendous amount of fire and heat. All the heat generated by the burning fuel heats pipes filled with water above the combustion chamber. The water gets so hot inside the pipes, it turns to steam. This steam is then used to turn a large turbine, which then rotates a generator that creates electricity. The electricity produced is then used to power the facility and is also sold to Rocky Mountain Power. You could be using some of the electricity created by this facility in your very own homes. Once this steam produces electricity, it then travels through underground pipes to Hill Air Force Base, where it's used as a source of energy to heat buildings and for use in their cafeterias and hospital. When the garbage or fuel is all burned up, only about 10% remains as ash which looks just like the ash you might see in a campfire pit. This ash is then taken by a truck to the landfill, where the metal in the ash is removed with a very, very large magnet. This metal is then recycled. The remaining ash is then used as cover for other garbage in the landfill. So, for every 10 garbage trucks that enter the facility with waste, one truck leaves with ash. It's an amazing process. You might be asking yourself where all the smoke is. 
Don't big fires like those in the combustion chamber make a lot of smoke? Yes, they do. The energy recovery facility uses scrubbers to clean the air. When you wash the dishes, or your bicycle, or even your dog, you have to scrub them with a brush, using soap and water to remove the dirt. The air scrubbers work much the same way. They use water and cleaning agents to remove the smoke from the air. In fact, the scrubbers clean the air so well that you can't see or smell any smoke coming from the smokestacks outside. The bus you rode here on produces more chemicals than the exhaust from this facility. The whole process is so efficient that 100 pounds of garbage coming into the facility is reduced to 25 pounds. So garbage coming into the facility looks like this, and when it leaves the facility, it looks like this. Plus, it creates clean energy. Pretty amazing. The Davis landfill is a very important part of our environmentally protective waste management system. One of the most interesting and beneficial parts of operations at the landfill is the recycled drop-off center. We all can bring lots of recyclable waste to this center, including paper products, plastics, like milk jugs and detergent bottles, aluminum cans, steel, glass, and cardboard. These recyclable products are pressed into large bales and taken to other manufacturing facilities where they are once again made into useful products. Another great part of this facility is an area where you can drop off household waste. Anything delivered to this location that is deemed usable is placed in the reuse shed at the same location. People are invited to take these items and use them as needed. This eliminates a lot of waste from entering the landfill. Another awesome thing about this facility is that it's operated in part with wind and solar power. A lot of green waste like grass, leaves and tree branches are brought to the landfill. Instead of being buried, we actually make them into dirt. Yeah, dirt. It's a process called composting. We combine all this green waste together and then allow it to decompose. When it's finished, we have a product called compost. Compost is added to the soil on farms, gardens, and flower beds. It makes things grow strong and healthy. The material that can't be reduced, reused, or recycled is put into the landfill because garbage can sometimes damage the environment. Special steps are taken to ensure that it's disposed of in a way that treats this area with respect. The landfill is lined with a geosynthetic liner. This liner protects the water and soil underneath from being contaminated by the garbage. When waste is put into the landfill, the ash from the energy recovery facility is used to cover that garbage. We are required to use six inches of soil to cover the garbage every day. We use the ash as an alternative to soil. This helps to keep the garbage from blowing around and keeps animals out of it. When a section of the landfill is completely filled, another liner is put on top. Soil is then added and plants and grasses are introduced to cap the area. Underneath, the garbage begins to decompose, producing a gas called methane. Methane is both a good and a bad gas. If it's allowed into the air, it can cause pollution. If trapped, it can be used as a clean source of energy. The Davis landfill has created a very efficient process to capture the methane gas. Once this gas is collected, it's compressed and then sold to Hill Air Force Base. The gas is then used to run an engine similar to an engine in a car. As this engine runs, it produces electricity that is then sent to Rocky Mountain Power and then to your homes. Because of the efforts of so many people, the life of this landfill is expected to extend many years into the future. When it's finally filled, the area will be turned into a park where families from the entire area can come and enjoy spending time playing and enjoying the outdoors in a clean and safe environment. We should remember that we all create garbage. Therefore, it's the responsibility of everyone to do the best we can to reduce, reuse, and recycle as much as we can.
If we do this, we will continue to enjoy a clean environment where we can learn and grow. Thank you for taking time to watch this video presentation. And remember to do the best you can to keep our world clean and healthy.